Welcome to Higher Study Prep. Today we are going to show how to use our GRE practice module. We have another video in which we show how to use the GRE mock test. Please visit that video to have more ideas. Now let me first start with the GRE practice module. Once I go there, it takes me to an interface like this. But for new users, you might end up being in a page that looks like this which gives you the plans and pricing for uh, to use this module. The first option is the seven days free trial. So if you want to give it a trial and just check out how our module looks like, you can purchase this for no cost at all. There are two other options, the one month premium of $15 that lets you have access on GRE practice and mock test for one month. You also have the four month premium option for $49, which gives you an access for four months. You can explore these options and choose whatever suits you best. After subscribing, you can go back to the GRE practice session and you will have an interface that looks like you this and gives you all the options. Now here you can select either quantitative or verbal reasoning, whichever you want to try first. And there are different difficulty levels, low, medium and high. There's also a question pool to select from. Um, you can choose any of these. Uh, so for example, you can choose unanswered questions, answered questions. You can even use the option mark questions, in which case you can use the questions that you had marked uh, not done or to be difficult in all of your previous sessions, and you can come back to them for practice. So let me show you an example. I'll start with the quantitative reasoning with unanswered question with a difficulty level of low and probably I'm going to select arithmetic, algebra, and geometry. Some of the maths that I have practiced and I want to see that how better I have become in these sections. So I'm going to start. So this is the first question. There are seven questions and this is the first one out of it. So since this is a demo, I'm just going to use any example and submit it next. In this case, it will take me to the next question. So this is a second mathematics and probably the answer is A. I'm just trying my luck. Now, maybe I'm curious and I want to see what the result is and what's the probable solution is. In that case, instead of hitting submit and next, I will just hit submit. In this case, it will take me to this page with the answer. So my, uh, my guess wasn't right. Uh, it was a wrong answer. So I can try again. If I click here, try again, it will take me back to the same question again, which gives me an opportunity to try out. And just uh, to show that there's also timer here, which gives you how much time is elapsed for each math. So probably I tried another option and now I want to see whether it's right or not. After submitting, I see that this time it's wrong again. So what is the correct answer? If I s click here, it will show me the correct option. If I want to see more explanation on that, there are other sections here. For example, this one shows, uh, shows show me the answer explanation. If I click here, it shows the explanation. If this is not enough, in some cases, you can also opt for the video explanation, which gives you a more elaborate explanation of the math problem and how to solve it. So suppose I'm happy with the solution and I want to practice it again in the next sessions. So I mark it here and it will save it for me. Now I'm moving on to the next question and I'm clicking answers. So I can go on and finish the answers, all of them, as much as I want to practice. Now suppose I'm happy with my practice and I want to end my session today. I will click this end practice session, which will take me to the final page of the results. Now here it says 50% quantitative overall success rate. So it's 50% because I tried two questions of which I was able to answer correctly one of them, the second one from the geometry section. That's why it's 50% success. I can look into the detailed report here to get a more elaborate result. So here in the detailed report, we see that the results are here, which shows which one is correct, which one is wrong, and it corresponds to the questions. And these have the links again. So 
for the first question which I didn't do right, I can click here to go back to the original question where I can try it again or look at the correct answers and video explanation. In the detailed uh, result, there's also subsection, difficulty level, time, others times, number of attempts and users attempted. So what does these sections mean? The subsections represent the sections that we had selected at the beginning of the practice test. The difficulty level, it's more of a dynamic number based on the users who have solved our problems. So this has been calculated based on how accurately these uh, quantitative pro problems have been answered by the people who tried and a number has been assigned based on this. So uh, these numbers may keep on changing based on how many people uh, can answer them properly. This column shows the time, that is how many seconds did you take to solve it. Uh, since it was a demo, I didn't take much time. But if we look at the other times, like the average of the time uh, that other people attempted, we can see that how much time does it take to solve this problem. So it gives you a comparative idea that how fast or slow are you uh, with respect to other people who tried it. This column shows the number of attempts uh, that were needed for you to solve this problem. And the last column shows a user statistics on how many people tried to answer these questions so far. So this gives you a pretty uh, good statistics about this process. And the most wonderful thing about it is that uh, you can customize your test, come back whenever you want to practice and uh, change all the options that you have. You can also uh, try out the marked questions which you had marked uh, because they were important or difficult in your prior sessions and come back to them anytime you want to. So here as a demo, I'm also going to show a verbal reasoning just so you can have an idea how that, that section looks like. So I'm choosing verbal reasoning uh, with text completion and again the difficulty level of low uh, with all the unanswered questions. Let's start this session. So this one looks like, uh, the, uh, the interface looks like this. So for the first question, I'm not even reading it. Just as a demo, I'm choosing one option and probably I want to see what the answer looks like. So I'm going to submit just like I did in my previous session. And here again, um, luckily I got the right answer, but I still want to sh see the correct answer explanation. So I can click here to get the explanation. Uh, similarly, this one has a video explanation. So if I want to dig deeper, I can look into this. If not, I can just go to the next question and complete my sessions. Similarly, at some point, if I want to end my practice, I can click here and it will take me to a similar interface with uh, the overall success rate. Uh, and in the detailed report, I can again see how many questions I tried the subsections, the difficulty level, and so forth. So the purpose of this video was to get you familiarized with the type of practice questions we have, how the interface looks like, how you can navigate, and I hope that you can use this video as a demo to practice more. And thank you for watching this video.